Were you having trouble using the pedal? It is just really damn awkward without sitting and that pedal kind of sneaks away on you. Oh yeah. That's one thing I'll say, if you get the Eastwood TIG 200, you got to figure something out with that pedal. It's kind of crappy and it'll run away on you. So today, everyone knows how god awful these TIG pedals are that you get with like 99% of these TIG welders that are you know affordable for garage people. So I'm going to probably over engineer the hell out of it and honestly probably make it worse as well as might destroy it. I don't know. We'll find out. But I'm going to try because I'm sick of this thing. So I think I got some scrap steel kicking around that I can hob cobble together and make it a usable pedal. Is my base plate that this will bolt up to and here is my greasy pedal with side plates now these this bottom hole here is gonna be for the hinge this piece here that will get attached to that and up here what I'm thinking is using a chunk of ready rod going through to a bearing that I've jammed a 3 8 nut into and that will roll along the top and hopefully give it a smooth actuation. So I'm going to kind of assemble some things, tack it together and see what it does. So here's my Hager gross design. Works, you know, gotta get everything tight. It's gonna be a little floppy. But bearing here and you got a nice pedal actuation. I should probably build a plate for the top of this so the bearing doesn't get caught on all these ridges, but I'll do that at another time. But for now, this works. So I'm gonna finish bolting this up and we'll be back.
So, here it is assembled. It will be getting pulled apart and probably painted eventually. But for now, there it is. I think I probably will end up putting a plate on the top here to get rid of these ridges. And then, in an upcoming segment of whenever I work on this next, I got a nice little attachment that we're doing to this. And I'll show you guys when I get to that point. But that that is one thing to avoid your warranty, the method I'm gonna be doing after this. But we'll come to that when we come to it. So now I'm gonna try this out. Also, I need some rubber feet for this because I have a feeling this is just gonna scoot itself across my floor. I totally brain fart and forgot to grab some. So I'll probably do that in the next day or so here. But let's give her a whirl and see what happens. You know what, if it was actually sturdy, this is not too bad. I just want to try this out. Oh, I'm sorry, you're going to screw this. Like, if it's sturdy, I think it gives you oh. a little nicer control. Dude, it doesn't even have to be sturdy because you can use your heel to balance it. That's oh, way. so, it's so much smoother. Uh -huh. I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even get rid of those indents because they might actually help you regulate. Maybe. Each indent, you'll, you can feel with your foot, so you can feel if your foot's moving. Uh, switch to AC. Yep. It's piss whale on this. Connectors off one of these, so I'm cutting yeah, the end off from this trigger. Then use a couple of Deutsches. Tiny yellow wire goes up to a print of that and the ground for the bottom. So, and then this is the output of the variable signal. And which one is that? Is that the green? I got three wires here. So the black is the ground, red is or yellow is the signal pickup, 
and then green is my variable. Green is married, and then brown slash yellow are my on signal. So it all has to be in this. That's what I got to jump. The thing about this isn't it controlled by this. So if you set this to eighty, no matter what you do here, it's eighty. That's the problem. Isn't that what you want though? Or do you want it to pulse 200? Do you want it to pulse no, the max? I want, it, set I, want the I want it to pulse the max. I set the Which should be the two going into your potentiometer if you bypass no. this, right? Because essentially this all the way down Guess is this bypassed. Run. Splice into these, run them out this plug, and kick them out. Beside it. Go up to the machine or whatever, like make a piece about that long yep. with the two pin Deutsch connector and cut that end off. And I'm gonna have to have a two pin Deutsch connector on its plug that goes to the welder as well as on its wire and here. So and I can plug it each. For this. If you do everything you do after the dial, then the dial affects what you're gonna do. And you want the dial to affect it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, so you're just bypassing exactly. this. And that's what I was yeah. trying to say. But you were kind yeah. of Well, no, because I was wanting to work. figure out, because I was wanting to make sure I was actually thinking correctly instead of just looking at it. Thinking. Yeah, so you should be able to take your five volt reference, or your reference coming out of this, your signal out yellow, yep. and your signal out of this, which is brown. The signal out is green. Green? And that's what tells okay. the uh, machine what you're at. Okay. So you have to take your yellow and your green, and you, so... and you put your switch in line with them, right? Okay, so, so now for the plan on this, I'm gonna run a couple wires to splice the green and uh, yellow wires together. So I can run those from the switch on the TIG torch itself. So I can make this do a pulse weld basically because you can't have that function on the Eastwood TIG 200. Just one that I have, so I decided I'm gonna make my own. So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna drill a hole for, uh, to run the grommet through so I can get the wires out of this box. So we'll do that first here. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna pull this rheostat out just so I don't accidentally run the drill right into it. Now you're thinking. Pick a, pick a plan, bud. And another thing for the viewers as well, eventually down the road, not today, but I plan on taking this because on these Eastwood TIG 200s, they give you a pedal where your amp adjustment is on the side. And that's the worst damn thing ever. If you have to change your amps, you've got to crawl under your bench and you can't do it on the front of the machine because if you run off of its adjustment, it's as soon as you touch this pedal, you're full throttle. If, or you're up to your max amperage, you can't play with it. So this, I'm eventually gonna move up to the bench so I can actually control this easily. But that'll be a later date. I'm not too concerned about it. By the moment. way, I just want to point something out. Steven had an AGD hat the whole time and he was holding out on me. Must be happy I gave it to you now. Well, yeah. I love it, it's my new favorite hat. And there we go, just like that. Got myself a nice little grommet in there. So, I got two strands of wire here. I'm gonna use these to control everything. Should work fine. Now let's see if I can't screw this up. I completely destroyed this uh, TIG pedal. Also, if anyone cares about warranty, don't do this. What's warranty? Exactly. I, don't, I don't own anything new enough to have warranty. It's a foreign term to me.
let's get this thing screwed back together and get everything figured on the torch side of things. Now here's the big scary part. Lopping her off. Yeah. There's myself. five wires in there though. Oh, it's only two. Is there only two? Yep. Nice. So. two-pin wire on here so instead of having your switch go through this which eventually this will get a two-pin plug like I put on the TIG pedal so if I just want to ever run this trigger I can just plug it in hook up to the machine but for now this is what hooks into the back of the pedal that I modified and that should hopefully give me the yeah it's warm the high current pulse when I want it so let's go hook this up and try it out <laughs> There's your pulse, buddy. It's been weak, but get the what's, your, what's your pedal out? I have 125, so it's getting around a little bit more. Let's see what this does. Oh, the pedal has to be on the same point. Yeah, you got to be past just turned on to do it. Alrighty, well, I'm going to give this a whirl, try out the pulse. See what you do. things go. Would I recommend doing it? Yeah, maybe. It's going to take a lot of practice to get used to. So there we go guys. Got a haggard pulse setting for the Eastwood TIG 200. I'm sure there'll be more mods we do to this thing to make it a little more user friendly for us because we're on a budget. We don't want to spend like 1500 to two grand on a fancy unit. So until next time, take it easy.